Hey everybody, wanted to go over some functions that will allow you to grab the ball tracking data that we have for, I believe we're up to about nine stadiums now in spring training this year. Corey Schwartz from MLB Advanced Media a couple of days ago on Twitter announced to everyone that we were going to be adding a number of stadiums uh, that would have StatCast data essentially uh, this spring training. We had two last year, um, the Cardinals and the stadium, the Salt River Field, which hosts the Diamondbacks and the Rockies. This year, we've got Detroit, Minnesota, the Mets, the Yankees, the Phillies, the Pirates, and Toronto. Uh, and Toronto's important because I believe they're going to be playing their Major League regular season games there uh, uh, during the pandemic. So I wanted to show you how you can actually get your hands on this data. Now, normally, data is available through StatCast, and so you can use the uh, Scrape uh, StatCast Savant function within Baseballer. This data apparently is not being uploaded to Savant right now, but there is another way to get at it. So let's first load Baseballer and we'll load Tidyverse. We also want to denote which stadiums or essentially which home team's IDs are going to have that pitch tracking data available. Um, and so these are just the, the IDs that uh, are associated with each home team from the MLB official stats API. So next thing is, let's pick a couple of dates. So I'm just picking the first three days where there were spring training games, last day in February, March 1st, March 2nd of this year. So we'll just put that in a vector. And then we're gonna use the get game packs MLB function to uh, grab that game information. And within that, it will we'll be able to subset and filter for only those stadiums or only those games where we know that there's pitch tracking available. Let me just pull this up just so you can see it. Uh, again, this will give you the game pack and it gives you all kind of detailed information about each of those games. So we can see that it's a day game, that it's a spring training type of game, etc. cetera. Uh, the neat thing here though is it will tell you who the away team was as well as their team ID. And then we're gonna see the same thing for the home team and their home team ID. And so that is what we're gonna use to filter down and figure out which game packs actually have the pitch tracking data. So let's get rid of that. So we're gonna look for all of the stadium tracking IDs that we put into this little vector over here. And we're gonna filter our spring training game packs uh, data frame on the home team ID column. So we're gonna look for whether or not that home team ID column has the home team ID for the stadiums that we know are going to have pitch tracking data this spring. And then the pull function here, this is a, a dplyr function, this just simply says, hey, take, that, take this one column and extract it as a vector that I can use somewhere else. So we'll just show you what that looks like. So now we've just got a you know, simple list of these uh, game packs that we actually want to pull data for. So after that, now it's just a matter of, rather than going to StatCast, going to the official MLB Stats API and pulling down this data. And this is where they've got pitch-by-pitch -pitch data that essentially feeds, you know, feeds the game day app, feed, feeds some of the other um, you know, platforms that they have. The nice thing, though, here is that it's the same data or much the same data that you can get from StatCast. The data is going to be less refined. The column names are going to be completely less refined but all the data that you're gonna want is in there. Um, now they do some data cleanup before it goes to StatCast. So if they notice that there's been maybe some errors in the, uh, in the, in the tracking data, um, or if you know, they, they clean up some pitch types, I believe sometimes. So some of that stuff's gonna be off. But again, I, this is better than nothing, honestly. So here we're gonna map over all of those game packs that were in the games to scrape vector. Um, we're gonna use the get P by, uh, PVP play by play MLB function. And all you have to do here is just feed it um, the, the game pack. So let's run this and let's see what kind of data we get. So we're looking at about uh, 13 games. So that get play by play MLB function, it's gotta go a game at a time. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna do any kind of large amount of scraping across a large number of games. Savant's nice because you can do a date range Right now, as far as I know, the Stats API only allows you to pull one game at a time in terms of getting that play-by-play -play data. But as you can see, the 10 to 13 games didn't take all that long, about less than a minute. Uh, but let's pull this up here so you can take a look. 
So this is, as far as I can tell, the most raw play-by-play -play data that you're going to be uh, able to acquire. And we can see here a lot of this will look similar. Um, so you've got your, your type. What was the type of event? Was it in a pitch? Was it an action? Something else. You've got timestamps, but here you start to see some of the similar type of data from StatCast, right? What's the description of the actual event? Uh, we can go here and look at things like, um, uh, oh, hold on, let me go a little farther down here. So what was the call, right? So if it was a pitch by pitch uh, instance here, what was the result of the pitch? Was it a foul ball? Was it a called ball? Was it a swinging strike? Um, you know, was it a batted ball event? And we've got runs or outs, things of that nature. Let me scroll little farther down here, just so you can start to see where some of the pitch tracking data is. Oh, we gotta go a little farther. There's a lot of columns here. And again, not all of them are gonna be as useful for you. But if you start sliding through here, you've got your matchups, you've got your, hit, your pitchers, you've got your hitters, you've got information if they're a righty lefty. But we keep going and we keep going. And now we start to get into the data you're interested in. So what type of a pitch was it? Was it a slider? Was it a four-seam fastball? You've got the code. You've got the more, uh, more like the label or the description. You've got the velocity, right? Speed out of the hand, right? How did it start? How did it end in terms of velo? Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? You've got um, the extension data. You, you're going to have your uh, coordinates in terms of uh, break, but also in terms of where around the plate was the pitch, you know, in terms of vertical, in terms of horizontal location. The other thing that you have, and I think it's in here, I just gotta uh, see where it is. Um, you've got information about the break, um, the break angle, the break length, and then you've got your spin rate, and then here you've got the spin direction. So if you've um, you know, possibly seen it on Twitter when I posted this a while back, uh, as of right now at least, StackCast isn't incorporating the spin direction or spin axis data into their downloads, but that data is here and it was captured for 2020 and you can see it captured in spring training in 2021. So these, this pitch data breaks spin direction column, that's going to be that spin axis essentially um, that folks are really interested in. So in any event, hope that's helpful. Um, again, it's not available in StatCast or you know, through Savant, but we do have pitch tracking at a number of stadiums this, this spring. Should be really interesting to take a look at that data. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, just you know, hit me up on Twitter, and uh, happy to help.